Welcome to the Beef Lab. I'm your host, Coach Joe Strong, here at the Mecca of Strength and Conditioning, Varsity House Gym. The Beef Lab is an inside look at everything it takes to run a world-class training facility. This is the source for strength entrepreneurs who want to learn more about programming, training athletes, business development, and marketing their brand. We're going to show you how we took Varsity House from a dingy little garage gym to a world-class brand. Coach Joe here from Varsity House Gym. Welcome to another edition of the Beef Lab. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about the other component of training, and that's nutrition and food. So we're going to talk about food prep. And for those of you who follow me, you know, on social media or you know here in the gym, you know that the 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 only other thing that I'm as passionate about training is is, is eating, and uh, and a lot of that comes to my love for actually cooking the food and growing up in a house where my mother cooked every day and we ate home cooked meals every day. So I'm going to take you in a little bit, give you some tips, and take you into my house and and give you some tips on how my wife Adele and I tackle our family food prep every week and, and from from ordering the food to cooking the food and prepping all the food and making our meals and things like that uh, we try to set ourselves up for success each week by just sticking to a plan and, and executing that plan and making sure that we're consistent with our food prep and that way you know each week we have home cooked meals that are healthy that I know what's in them I know my portions and uh, and and it helps you stick to your overall training goals much more uh, effectively. Uh, if, you, if your goal is to put on 10 pounds of lean mass, your diet has to match those goals. If your diet's all over the place and your nutritional and your caloric intake and such and your macros are all over the place and every day is different because you're just trying to piece meals together by going out to lunch or running out quick for a snack or down in a protein shake, it's going to be really hard to achieve those goals. Uh, so, so food prep is critical to the process of, of gains, right? whether it's gaining lean mass or getting leaner, right, and losing body fat, or just you know, as from a performance standpoint, making sure that you're performing at optimal levels all the time and requires sound nutrition. So, I know what you're thinking, though, but you like cooking, Joe, and 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 you post you know food all the time, and it looks like you really know what you're doing. Well, that's true. Um, I spent a lot of time cooking, and I and I do enjoy it, and it's one of my favorite, you know, pastimes. And on, on the weekends, we have we entertain a lot, and we have friends over a lot, and I do most of the cooking, and and that is part of who I am. But that doesn't mean that it has to be a miserable and arduous process for you. I think I think people make food prep miserable. Uh, it, it's not that it actually is miserable, and that if you if you enjoy training, and most people who train all the time enjoy eating too, because it kind of goes par uh, you know par for the course. Um, that if you you know spend a little bit of time learning how to cook a little bit better, reading a couple cookbooks and things like that, and just getting yourself a little bit more acclimated and practicing, you know, not the pra cooking is a skill just like anything else that you will get a lot better at it and it will become easier and easier and easier. So, like all things worth having, it's going to take some dedication, some commitment, and, and a little bit of, uh, of time before you get a real good routine going. And over a couple weeks, you know, you'll start building those habits and then after a few months it's part of your routine and then over, you know, uh, a few years like myself, over a bunch of years, 20 years, it's just my lifestyle, it's just what I do. I couldn't imagine going out to eat every day for lunch and just grabbing a, a turkey cold cut sandwich or something like that. It's just not what I do. I wouldn't feel good, right? And it does it, my, it weighs me down. I, I'm usually, if I do do that once in a blue moon, I usually feel like I'm about to fall asleep from it and pass out. So keep the meals light and clean the way I like them and, uh, and you have to make them yourself. All right, so what are some of the things that you need to do? So I'm gonna warn you, forewarning, right? I need a big warning sign behind me, Trev, right? Um, this will change your life. 
if you do this and you listen to me and you do this properly, that this will change your life and it'll give you a, a much more profound connection with your food. Okay, and, and this will change your relationship with food if you do these steps. And I'm going to give you my top 10 steps to improving your food prep. Okay, number one, you got to read a cookbook. If I want to learn about training, or I want to learn about business, or I want to learn about marketing, I'm generally going to start with a book, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and try and find an expert or somebody that I identify with. And I'm going to read their book and try and figure out what it is that they're doing that maybe I'm not doing in my business. So why is cooking any different? I'm going to go grab a cookbook from somebody I like. Maybe it's Emeril Lagasse. Maybe it's you know Paula Dean. Although you know most of her stuff is is not too healthy. Maybe it's Jada De Laurentiis or one of those you know uh, Food Network stars or whoever it is that you might think that you'd like. If you like Italian, you like Chinese, you like Korean, you like Spanish food. There's tons of cookbooks out there. Grab a good cookbook and read through it front to back as if you were reading a book. Look at some of the recipes. Look at some of the ingredients. Look for the commonalities in what's in those ingredients and, and try and replicate some of them. My first cookbook that my mother bought me when I was a little kid, now I was only 12, my mom bought me a cookbook uh, called Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Childs. My mom uh, and me used to sit and watch Julia's cooking show on TV. And Julia's a legend. She's you know one of the most famous cooks that, that out there. And, and the cookbook cost about, you know, I think it's $25 on Amazon. And it's a how-to book. It's not just recipes. It's how to saute, how to flambe, how to, how to cut a chiffonade, how to, how to do, you know, how to cut an onion properly. And it's a lot of the little details that you're not going to get from just a regular cookbook. So it's a great how-to cookbook on the techniques and also recipes of cooking and that's mastering the art of French cooking there's a link uh, in the show notes to that you could go link right to Amazon you can buy that book it was my first book I still have it I read it all the time I still reference it sometimes when I need to make a sauce I haven't made in a long time right a sauce de Bernays right I'll pull out the cookbook and, it, and it's there and it refresher it's a great it's a great tool for your anyone's kitchen uh, my second tip is watch some videos. All right, the Food Network doesn't show cooking anymore. It's all reality TV. When I used to watch it back in the day, it was nothing but cooking. But now all the good cooking, and if you want to see somebody make a recipe, it's all on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. There's nothing that's not on YouTube. Okay, so you can w type in any food you think you can think of. You want to make a paella? Make if you want to make a healthy paella, type in healthy paella into YouTube and there will be a recipe for healthy paella. You want to make a gluten-free chicken parmesan or something like that? There's a recipe for on YouTube, I guarantee it. So watch a bunch of videos. Take note of what people are doing. Look at their skills, how they're, how they're prepping their foods and things like that. And then go make those recipes. A lot of those re food, a lot of those um, videos are usually accompanied by the recipe or a link to somebody's website and things like that. And I've, I've found some amazing recipes by surfing through the web and searching through YouTube. Okay? Number three. And one of my, this is probably one of the most important in my eyes, and that's getting a quality kitchen knife, getting a quality chef knife. I meant to bring mine with you to show you, but I have a bunch of pictures, and I'll, I'll make sure that, that Trevor posts a picture uh, of the knife online as you, and I, there's a link to it also in the show notes. You can get it on Amazon. A, a good knife is going to cost you a few bucks, all right? Uh, a cheap knife is under $100. A good knife is 200 plus. It's an investment that you're going to have for years. I've had my, my the first good knife that I bought myself. Okay, uh, I still have and still use to this day. And that knife is, I say I bought that when I was 19 years old. So that knife is 20 years old. It's still sharp as a razor. It still works great, and 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 I use it all the time. Okay, so my favorite, it, it, my favorite knife is 
Yoshihiro. Yoshihiro is a Japanese brand and most of the Japanese brands I prefer because of the Japanese steel. The high carbon Japanese steel is very sharp and, and sharpens easily on a diamond sharpener. You don't have to have like a whetstone and a, and, a, and a wheel you know and be a blacksmith to sharpen your knife like you do with some of the other German knives that are a hardened type of stainless steel. They do not sharpen easily. I also do not recommend using a a, a automated sharpener. It's either a, a diamond stick or a whetstone, not one of the machines that I, and I put my knife through. That'll destroy your blade really quickly. Okay, the, most of those are very bad for a good knife. All right, so get a good knife. And the reason for that is because a sharp knife right, cuts easy. And I barely have to touch the foods that I'm cutting. To, to, to cut through them. A dull knife, I'm pushing, I'm gripping, I'm trying, and it, I've never cut myself with one of my sharp knives. I've cut myself numerous times using somebody else's crappy dull knife because I'm, I'm holding the food, I gotta saw the freaking food to get it to cut, and I slip and cut my freaking thumb or something else, and, and, and that's inevitably what happens. So now, now that I'm a seasoned pro, anytime I go to somebody else's house for a barbecue, I bring my kitchen toolkit with my own knives, my own utensils, and everything else that I need for cooking just in case I got to save the day okay my tip number four okay, is storage so you're gonna make all this good food you can go out and get a good knife and then you're gonna then you're gonna have no place to put it you got to have quality storage so if you look in my refrigerator if we could peer into my refrigerator what you'd see is stacks of Tupperware with all the stuff that I cooked that weekend my vegetables my chicken you know my brown rice whatever it is I put them all in different Tupperwares and mark them or, or put a piece of tape on them or something like that or you know and then just and then they're in the fridge and when I when I need to portion my meals out I have them stored. Uh, I got a couple links for these as well. My favorites are Snapware. Snapware is my favorite is glass. If you can afford it and 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 buy the glass, the glass is the best because glass doesn't pick up any of the smell and residue, and they don't get cruddy over time. Plastic inevitably gets all cruddy and soaks up a lot of the flavors, and like like especially of like a red sauce or or a, a garlic and olive oil or something like that. Those though, that flavor is going to seep into the plastic, and it's going to stain it, and it's going to stay in there no matter what, no matter how much you clean them. Glass clean super easy glass goes in the dishwasher the tops for the snapware go in the dishwasher so it makes it a breeze um, another one is called meal prep haven they make they make uh, they make um, you know the safe for you plastic the uh, uh, PBA free uh, plastic that uh, that is portioned off like little meal prep things with like three different portions and you could put your meats your starch your veggies and stuff like that and they they snap shut and those are pretty good too but snapware is my favorite they're all glass the tops lock down really tight and that's a great storage tool uh, for your meals and then for uh, your your long-term storage in the refrigerator right well you can go to cheap room and get some Ziploc or some, you know, you know, the other companies make some of the cheap plastic ones, but they have a lot of chemical. I don't like to microwave or cook those in those or put hot foods in those because of the chemicals in them. Um, number five, okay, plan and log your meals. So most weeks, now I've been cooking a long time, so I can pretty much just cook off the cuff any day of the week and just come up with something. But a lot of the times, me and Adele will plan our meals and we'll say you know what do we want to cook next week you know what do we want and, and like Sunday we're, we're eating Sunday dinner together and we're like what, what are we cooking next week what do you want to make what do you want to make during the week I don't know let's make let's make a roast chicken one night let's do that Wednesday when Adele cooks you know we'll make a roast chicken and how what do we want next weekend what's we're going I don't know we haven't made we haven't made it made a roasted you know roasted cauliflower in a while we haven't had steak in a couple of weeks maybe we'll have a maybe we'll have a london broil or, or a sirloin or something like that something lean to try to eat you know leaner cuts of steak and uh, and and some maybe I'll make some baked you know sweet potato fries or something along those lines whatever it is plan it out get a couple meals planned out say all right and 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 plan those meals so that you know you're gonna have leftovers. Don't make one chicken breast, right? What the hell's that doing? Make four or five chicken breasts, and then you have it for two or three days. Then I got two meals, right? I have one chicken breast to eat, I got four more for lunch for the next, you know, for lunch and dinner for the next two days, all right? Um, make a chili. Chili's a great 
bang for your buck meal. Goes over for, you know, you can have lunch, you can have chili for lunch for two, three days. Okay? So plan and log your meals. Write down what you get. This also helps you set up your recipe. So if I know I'm going to make something on Sunday and I've already kind of thought about what I was going to make, I can start putting my, my I can start putting my, uh, my food order together, my shopping list, start putting my recipe together, right? And, 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 and then I'm going to log those meals and I'm going to log what I've eaten as well, right? And it's critical. Now I've included one of our food logs and, and, and meal prep timesheets in the show notes so you can kind of like make a note of you know when you're going to eat what you're going to eat and how you're going to make those meals number six create a must-have shopping list the must-have shopping list is all the things that you use to cook every single week the stuff that you have to have in your house that you like every single week i have one i've included mine and i'll just read a couple things off of the list so you can see all right Trader Joe's steel cut frozen oats. I have to have them. They're in my house at all times. When we run, when I get down to like two or three packages, we freak out. Okay, we're running low. We got to go get more, and I go buy a whole bunch. Whole wheat, hundred percent whole wheat or farro pasta, organic whole wheat or farro pasta. Ezekiel bread, plain Greek yogurt. Okay, uh, a variety of canned beans, kidney beans, black beans, uh, uh, cannelloni beans, and such for making whatever. Uh, I like I like organic frozen vegetables, so you always have something quick. If you forgot to get some vegetables or you're running low on fresh vegetables, you can you know use some of the frozen vegetables, almond butter, uh, unsalted nuts. You know, obviously chicken. Right? Uh, an abundance of chicken is always on auto delivery at my house. Uh, brown rice, sweet potatoes, right? Honey, agave, lemons and limes, grass-fed milk, jumbo eggs. Just a couple things, whatever it is. You need to make a list of the foods that you like and that you think are going to help you with your nutrition and your gains and get them on a list and make sure that you have them every week. And that way, that way, you know, whenever you're, if you're doing your food shopping and you're doing your prep, you just go down the list and it's super easy. When you walk into a food store with no list and you're hungry and you don't know what you're going to cook, you just buy all sorts of crap and you always wind up walking out of there with a lot of stuff you don't need. All right, that's when you get the five gallon tub of mayonnaise and you're like, what, what am I doing with this? Right? You know, so make sure that you create a must have shopping list. I've included one of mine in the show notes and, and that'll help you out a ton. All right, number seven, okay? This is a game changer. This changed my life. Five years ago, when you wanted to order food or you wanted to cook food, you had to go to the store to get it. Now you don't have to leave your house. Almost everything can be ordered online. Amazon sells all your packaged goods. You could buy cans of beans, ketchup, Windex, you name it, anything you need for your house, including food stuffs like mayonnaise, things like that, whatever it is, right? The only thing they don't sell are perishable goods. I get everything that I need from either Amazon and or Fresh Direct, a local food delivery service. Stop and Shop has Peapod, ShopRite has a home delivery service now. So I'm sure no matter where you are in this country, that if you're living near a metro area and you're not out in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of, you know, uh, of uh, Alaska somewhere, you're not, you know, an Alaskan Bushman, okay, that you could order most of your food and look into some food delivery services. What's, make, what's great about Fresh Direct, and I'm not getting any money from them, so this isn't a plug for them, but what's great about Fresh Direct and other delivery services is that they save your order. So I can log in my go-to shopping list and plug all those foods into my, into my cart, buy them, and then the next time I want to purchase, I just click shop from my cart and I have the whole list pulled up again and I just go right down and order anything I want from that list, whatever my normal foods are. It's no more expensive than going to the store. The delivery charges are minimal, maybe five bucks. And if you shop from them a lot, like I do, I always get coupons for free delivery. And 
once or twice a year, I get a 20% off coupon for 20% off my whole order. And that's usually when I go buck wild and buy like tons of meat to freeze and I'll put it in my freezer, right? So I'll buy a whole bunch of meat that maybe I normally wouldn't. And I'll spend $250 on meat and stock up for a few weeks or months. Okay, but ordering online eliminates one of the most miserable processes in the whole in the whole in in all of cooking and that's having to go to the store nobody wants to sit in line at a shop right in a madhouse on Saturday when everybody's you know doing everybody's there and the place is packed and the parking lot's a mess and you got to lug everything to and from the car i put my order in Thursday or Friday night for Sunday morning Sunday morning's normally when we do our cooking I wake up in the morning, I plug in the time, and delivery time is from 6 to 8 a.m. I wake up in the morning, I go downstairs, oh, I make my morning coffee. Oh, look, there's my fresh direct, and my box is just sitting right there by the door. Awesome, awesome. In the wintertime, right here in Jersey, not bad. If it's hot in the summer, I then recommend that you schedule a time where you can get the food within a few minutes. You don't want to leave chicken sitting outside in the Arizona heat for you know an hour and a half. Hey, we're here in New Jersey, it's cold. All right, so this, that has been a game changer. It eliminates a huge part of the process. It makes it easy. It's almost like fun. You know, when we get the fresh direct boxes delivered to my house, it's like Christmas. We're excited. We go run over to the box to see what we got, right? Sometimes we order some new stuff. Uh, lately, they've been having some, they've had uh, grass-fed, all-natural venison, ground and loin. It's been fantastic. I've been ordering it every week. We've been making venison burgers, venison stew, venison, and it, no gamey taste. This is high quality, you know, all natural, free range, grass fed uh, venison. That's fantastic. So they have a huge variety. Last week we ordered, we got some seafood, we got mussels and some oysters from them. The, the quality was fantastic. All wild caught, of course, and, uh, and the quality was fantastic. Number eight, okay. Pick a day for your food prep. Whatever day it is, mine's Sunday. Football and food, that's basically how it works all fall in my house. In the spring uh, and summer, we're just depressed because there's no football, but we're still, we still have our food. At least it's nice out at that point, so now we can go outside and barbecue and sit outside and relax. All right, but in our house, Sunday is sacred, and we prep food, and I very rarely do anything other than, you know, spend time with Adele and spend time with my family. They either come over for food, or if, worst case, I'm going to my mom's and we cook together, me and mom, and, and me and Adele, and, and, and or we stay home and we cook and we prep our food, we go to church or whatever it is that we're doing and it's just time for us to spend together and I, I wanted to start that tradition as early as possible with her and, and that way when we have kids and it's just part of what we do. We spend time together on Sundays and we cook and whatever we're going to make and I want I, my vision for me is that, that that's time well spent not only prepping for my health and prepping for my for my gains to make sure that my food prep for the week is taken care of, but it's also, you know, managing my relationship with my wife and making sure that I'm spending quality time with her and that we have some type of connection and something that we like and enjoy to do together. So if I'm the head chef, she's my sous chef and she helps me out in the kitchen. She helps me prep and, and, and get food stuff ready. Uh, you know, if I'm making the, the chicken, she's cooking the rice and things like that. And we, and we have some fun together and that's just, you know, part of what we do. Uh, we like to make foods that we know are going to carry over for the week. So um, I got a whole bunch of recipes that I'm putting on, on, on the show notes, but a couple quick examples might just be, you know, roasted chickens, you know, uh, ro Provencal chicken, a sofrito chicken, my Cuban roast chicken, which is like a mojo chicken rub with like, you know, cumin and coriander and stuff like that. And you rub the chicken uh, and you roast it with some vegetables, chilies, stews, uh, uh, you know, a baked chicken dish with artichokes and peppers and things like that. Okay. There are a million recipes out there that I'm going to make a platter of food from and I'm going to have leftovers for Monday and Tuesday and, and, and maybe even Wednesday. Uh, and that, that is critical. But, but more than anything, folks, I think making a commitment to food and if your family and you're, if you're committed to making a change in your nutrition and, and, and you get your family involved and you and your either your your significant other or your kids and you make that time kind of sense mandatory 
Uh, I, I think it has a lot of benefits other than just the nutritional aspect and it has for us and, and not only, like I said, with our food and just making sure that we have healthy food, but just for our relationship. And I think that's a great uh, a tradition. In a lot of Italian families, I know Sundays were always family day and we every day mom was making a big pot of sauce and, uh, and, and you know, meatballs, sausages, whatever. And we would spend time in the kitchen with mom learning how to make whatever she was making. So, uh, number nine, okay, split the duties up. I can't do everything myself. I'm running a business. I'm busy. I'm working, you know, 12, 13 hours a day most days, right? So I get home late, you know, Monday through Thursday, it's pretty much 7 a.m. to 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, every night. So by the time I get home, it's 8.39. And, and you know, although I do cook sometimes at, that, at, at those hours, I don't want to be spending two hours doing food prep at 8 o'clock at night. I want to make sure that I have most of that stuff set up. I, I could just come home and put my meals together. If anything, I go home and make us a hot meal and make something quick. We make eggs and make a little omelet or something that's easy. Okay, but I'm the cook in the house. Adele's my sous chef, right? I cook on Sundays. I do the bulk of our food. I cook Fridays. If we stay home for dinner, we usually have date night on Fridays, and that's you know uh, uh, that's a, a nice dinner, a glass of wine, and, and a movie on Friday nights that I usually cook. Saturdays, if anything, that's the day we go out to dinner. But a lot of times, we even stay home and make our own food. Sundays, I do all the prep. Wednesdays is her day. Wednesdays, she cooks. Every Wednesday, no matter what, she works hard to get unless something tragic happens. But but she works hard to get out of work a little early on Wednesdays to get home and make another round of food prep so that we have food for Thursday and Friday. Okay, so my food generally lasts us, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, and her food, she cooks Wednesday and she'll make something uh, that'll last us Thursday, Friday. We'll have a nice hot dinner when I get home on Wednesday night and then we'll have leftovers for Thursday and Friday lunch. Right? And that way, um, uh, we're splitting the duties. She makes some of the foods that she likes and some of the things that she knows how to cook. I make the things that I like and the things that we both like to cook on the weekends and we're splitting the duties. And that way nobody feels like they're overwhelmed. She cleans the house, I do the outside, you know, I do the yard, things like that. It's like any other relationship. You have to divvy up the duties. I don't expect her to go food shopping, to, to cook all the food, to prep my food, to make my meals and stuff like that. I'm not a baby. I'm wearing this together. We're trying to be healthy and, 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 and together. So uh, I do all the food shopping, if anything. I make sure I order all the food, or if I need anything, I go out to the store and get it. Uh, I make sure that the foods are in the house for her to cook. Uh, you know, if, if she's going to make chicken that Wednesday, you know, sometimes maybe on a Tuesday, I'll marinate that chicken. I'll put the chicken in a, in a, in a Ziploc bag with some, you know, garlic, olive oil, and lemon or something like that and marinate it for her. So all she's got to do is come home and cook it. And, and, and we just try really hard to help each other and set each other up for make it easy for each other, you know, so that they, you know, one person doesn't have to do a ton of work. So she can come home, get home by 6.30 on Wednesday and by 7.30 dinner's done and she's and, and, and ready to go all right um, number 10 and this is the easy one you have to re well I should say I, let, let me rephrase that this is the hardest one of them all repeat steps one through nine over and over and over again consistently every week for weeks months and years it seems easy it sounds really simple right you know, I gave you a couple quick, easy steps, but the hard part is the consistency for most people. Something is always going to get in the way, right? An example, last Sunday, I wanted to go skiing. So I knew I was going to be gone most of the morning. So Saturday, I marinated all my meats. I got my recipes together. I, I, we decided what we were going to cook, right? I made sure all the food was ordered Sunday morning. The food delivery came. I unpacked everything before I left the house to go skiing. I went skiing, you know, from like 9 to like 2 by the time I got home. And that way when I got home, I could just put my meal together real quick. I made some, I made some, made some, uh, some baked chicken um, and, and, uh, and a whole bunch of roasted vegetables. Made some roasted cauliflower and, and broccoli and, uh, and some, brown, some, some cilantro uh, lime brown rice and stuff like that. And it made it nice and it was super easy, right? Rice goes in the rice cooker. Brainless, get yourself a good rice. That should be tip number, my bonus tip, get a good rice cooker. If you like rice, the rice cooker makes it brainless. So consistency is the key. What you do is what defines you. Every day you've got to make it a habit, right? If you do it for a week, anybody could do good food prep for a week, but to do it for 10 years like I have, 
takes work, takes consistency, takes commitment, takes a little bit of stubbornness too. I do not deviate from the plan too often. Sunday I cook food, that's it. You know, what is, what's Joe doing today? What are you guys doing today? I don't know, you wanna come over? I'm cooking food, I'm making food for the week. So uh, that's how it works in my house. Uh, it's worked well for us. Um, and, uh, and, and we eat really healthy, as organic and nat all natural as possible. Uh, we, I would say 90% of the food that we eat week to week is home cooked and homemade. And, uh, and, and you know, we save a cheap meal here and there for a night out. We'll go out to a nice place and a lot of times we try to go out for something and we don't cook like Thai food or Chinese or something, something that's, or something a little bit more elaborate like sushi and things that I don't make at home. And that way we're getting some different types of foods and different types of cuisines. And, and still, you know, you gotta get out of the house once in a while and have a little fun, drop a few sake bombs, all right? So that's my tips for developing a good habit and a good relationship with your food in order to improve your family food prep. That's how we do it in my house. It's pretty simple if you set it up. If you spend some time and write out your shopping list, plan your meals, go get a good knife, watch if you literally spend one week prepping it and kind of getting your ideas together and then start the following week, go get a knife, get maybe get a couple good, you know, if you don't have a good pan, get a good pan or something like that and just get to work and just have some fun with it and make it fun. Cooking is creative. I, I can't paint, nobody wants to hear me sing, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not much of a musician, I don't play instruments and things like that. So cooking is an artistic outlet for me. I, I, paint, I paint with flavor, right? And, and, and the satisfaction that I get from making a meal that everybody, oh my God, this is amazing, is, is, is great, not to mention how good I feel eating healthy food all the time. Like why wouldn't I want to, why would I want to only eat good once in a blue moon when I feel like cooking. I do it all the time and that's part of our process. I also save a boatload of dough. Going out for a crappy cold cut sandwich costs $10 a day for you know a, tur a, a Thuman's turkey sandwich. My meals are less than $5 a pop for me and my wife and it's organic chicken, organic vegetables, organic rice, organic pasta, whatever it is and it's good. You know, I got, I make bison meatballs, you know, whole wheat pasta with quality ingredients and a whole meal cost me less than five dollars. So, you know, you do the math. It's a little bit more time on my part, but I'm saving thousands per year, okay? Now, in the show notes, I'm gonna include a bunch of recipes and a bunch of different things and, uh, and easy recipes. I've been getting a lot of emails. I had, about, I, had, I had about 20 people DM me on Instagram about my breakfast balls, about my Joe Strong breakfast balls. It couldn't be more easier to make. Again, I just set it up for prep at night. I make the breakfast bowl the night before, let it sit in the fridge, and when I get up in the morning, it's like thickened up a lot, and it's, you know, it's ready to go. It's like breakfast pudding. It's fantastic. And, uh, and how, I, how I make my flavor bases, what I call my sofritos, right? In, you know, in Spanish culture, a sofrito is a flavor base of generally like bell peppers, onions, garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper, some lime, maybe some cilantro, stuff like that. But you can make an Italian sofrito with lemon, parsley, basil, right? Almost like a, almost like a pesto, right? You could make an Asian sofrito, right? With, with maybe some cilantro, some ginger, a little bit of, little bit of, uh, uh, you know, sesame oil, right? And, and maybe some red chili bread. You got to throw a little sriracha in there, something like that, and make yourself an Asian flavored base. And lemongrass is great in that also. And so what I do with those is I freeze them, as I blend them in the blender and I freeze them in ice cube trays, Right? And then I and then I you know put them in a bag. I put them in a the freezer. And anytime I'm going to make anything, I want to marinate some chicken. I don't know what do we feel like making. We're making Latin food that weekend. Couple Latin sofritos right in the right in the chicken. We're making Asian food. Couple Asian sofritos right in the chicken. Right, and you marinate the chicken for a couple of days. Make it taste fantastic. So a couple, whole bunch of easy quick recipes here. My Cuban white bean chili, soon to be world famous. My breakfast bowl, which has obviously gone global now that we're on Instagram. Right, uh, uh, frittatas. Right, frittatas are an Italian omelet. Right, basically it's a baked omelet. Right, I just take a whole bunch of whatever whatever leftovers I have in the house, vegetable wise, I just throw them in a frittata. Everything goes in a frittata. The, 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 the frittata is the Italian garbage can, right? Take a bunch of eggs, 
Take a bunch of leftover, you got potatoes, you got sweet potatoes, you got some broccoli, you, whatever, throw it all in the frittata. Bake it in the oven for five minutes, now you got a meal for another two days. Right? It's super simple. Um, Asian stir fry with lemongrass, really good one. Uh, moho chicken, so there's a bunch of recipes on there. Check them out, try them out, DM me, email me, like our, uh, uh, you know, like our, like my Instagram page. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube page. Give us a five star review on iTunes. If you like more recipes and you like more food stuff, let me know people. If you want more food, I've been doing a lot of training. We did an episode on nutrition uh, for female athletes with our nutritionist Simone Letta. But, it, but if you want more recipes and want more food specific stuff, let me know and I'll put another episode together and maybe, and maybe we'll shoot an episode in the kitchen, actually cook and do another varsity grill. So. Uh, Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my tips for improving your family food prep. And uh, you know, check the show notes out. I'll have a complete list of everything that we talked about today on there with some links to some great products. And, uh, and start prepping your food and uh, get on the road to some making some massive gains. Take care, welcome to the Beef, and, and thanks for signing into the Beef Lab.